Hello everyone, Pheasants here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will cover the air-to-air -air fire control radar Viper, showing its usage as well as going over the radar modes and submodes. For radar modes we have the following. Combined radar mode, CRM. Air combat mode, ACM. Under CRM we have the following submodes. Range while search, RWS. Situational Awareness Mode SAM Single Target Track STT Uplook Search ULS Velocity Search with Ranging BSR and Track While Scan TWS This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about the air-to-air -air radar and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial you will be able to use the air-to-air -air radar effectively. Let's get into it. This is the fire control page of the F-16. When it's sensor of interest, SOI, you can move the cursor around by using the radar cursor keys. You can lock a target by moving the radar cursor over it and pressing TMS forward on your stick. To unlock it, press TMS aft. I'm going to go over each of the OSBs as usual in a clockwise manner. The first OSB lets you select the radar mode, which can be either CRM or ACM. When you press this OSB, you will also notice other modes along the right hand side of the MFD. These are modes for the air to ground radar, which we will cover in a different tutorial. With the second OSB, you can cycle through the radar submodes. It starts in RWS, ULS, VSR, and TWS. There are two other submodes not present here, SAM and STT, which are used when locking up targets, as we will see a little later. The third OSB lets you expand the view located on the radar cursor. Think of it as a zoom in feature. This is useful, for example, to break out individual targets in a formation. You can use this function on your stick by pressing on your pinky button. The override OSB effectively puts the radar back on standby. Press it again to reactivate it. After that, we have the control page, which we will cover a little later. The next OSB is related to the IDM data link, which I will cover in a different tutorial. The following four OSBs allow you to transmit and assign a target to a member of your flight. When you have a target locked, press the OSB for that flight member, for example, number 1, to assign it to your lead. They will receive that target information along with a label on their FCR. The next OSB refers to the IFF mode, which I will cover in its own tutorial. Use the next OSB to change the bar scan of your radar. By default, it's 4 bar, then 1 bar, 2 bar, back to 4 bar. Essentially, what the bars do is define the vertical limits for the radar search area which are displayed next to the radar cursor. The bottom number is the lower altitude value, the top number is the top altitude value. In this example, it's searching for targets at a maximum altitude of 34,000 feet, all the way down to negative 4,000 feet. Anything above 34,000 feet currently in the cursor's position will not be seen. You can change the elevation of the radar by using the antenna elevation thumb wheel located on the throttle. What you have to consider when choosing how many bars to use is that for more bars, the refresh rate will be slower. Use a lower bar value to concentrate your radar's energy, getting more rapid refreshes but also limiting the altitude range the radar is scanning. The OSB above allows you to change the radar azimuth, which by default is 60 degrees centered on the nose. Press it once to go to 30 degrees, 
then 10 degrees back to 60 degrees. While using TWS, there is also a 25 degree option. There are two ways to change the azimuth by using your hands-on stick on throttle. If you move the radar cursor to the edge of the FCR, it will change automatically to 30 degrees. If you press and hold TMS forward, it will enter spotlight mode, which will put the radar azimuth at 10 degrees. As before, with the bars, use the azimuth options to narrow down the lateral or horizontal piece of sky that you're searching. A higher azimuth value means more area covered. A lower azimuth value means a higher refresh rate and a more narrow search area. Finally, we have the range options all the way up to 160 miles, 80 miles, 40, 20, 10, and 5. Just like the other fields explained previously, the further you push out the radar's range, the more time it will take to refresh the information as there will be a larger piece of sky to cover. Also note that not all aircraft will be detected at the furthest ranges of the radar. Remember, a small aircraft has a smaller radar cross-section, thus the smaller radar return your radar will see. Normally at longer ranges, only large aircraft will be detected. Fighter-sized aircraft should become visible within 80 miles depending on the type and aspect. With all this combined, in a nutshell, the best way that I can explain how the radar works is if you were holding a flashlight in a large dark room. You will only see what's within the flashlight's beam. If you point the beam at a wall that is near, you will be able to see things on that wall clearly, even smaller details. If you point the beam at a wall that is far away, you will still see, but with less detail and smaller details might not stand out to you. In the aircraft, you control the beam by using the range, azimuth, and bar controls. For those of you looking for a more in-depth explanation on how the radar operates, I highly encourage you to check the BMS manual starting on page 177. Finally, on the left-hand side, we have the radar cursor's position relative to bullseye. On the lower left corner, we have the aircraft's position relative to bullseye. Note that the value shown inside the circle will only be displayed if it's two digits. If it's three, which is currently the case, it's 175, a value will not be shown on here. You will have to reference the HUD to get this position. Now let's talk about the control page. In the current version of BMS, according to the manual, there are only two fields implemented. Target history and the AIFF couple-decouple. Change the target history field from 1 to 4 to change the frames displayed on the radar screen. The way this function is with a value of 4, the current frame is displayed along with the previous 3. Use this if you want to have a better understanding of a target's movements on the radar screen. The AIFF couple decouple is related to the IFF system and like I said before I will cover that in a separate video. RWS mode. This mode searches the volume of sky according to the range, azimuth and bar settings displaying the position of any detected targets on the MFD shown as white squares. No track data, target range, velocity, angle or ground track is available on these detected targets. However, even without any track data, you can tell the direction of a contact by the small white line attached to the contact. This contact is facing away from me. This one is facing my way. You can track one of these targets by putting your radar cursor over it and pressing TMS forward. While tracking a target, we have the following information. The target's aspect angle 
currently 0 degrees as it's facing away from me, the target's heading, its calibrated airspeed, and the closure rate. Underneath the contact, we have its altitude. When tracking a target like this in RWS, despite the fact it's not displayed anywhere, you're currently in Situation Awareness Mode SAM. The radar will continue to monitor the rest of the azimuth range and bars, but will periodically stop on the track target to give more up-to-date information about this target in detriment of any others, which it will also try to display. In SAM, you can also bug a second target while you're tracking the initial target. Move your radar cursor over another contact and press TMS forward once. You can then cycle between these two contacts by pressing TMS right. STT mode. You can enter a single target track either with a second press of the TMS forward button on an already tracked target or with a double press of that same button. This type of tracking devotes all your radar's energy into tracking one specific target and it will not show any others on its own. However, unlike in SAM mode mentioned previously, because of the increased focus of radar energy on the target, if it is equipped with a radar warning receiver RWR, this energy spike will be detected and if it's an enemy aircraft, it will likely start performing evasive maneuvers. This mode is the best mode when you plan to engage a single target with a weapon as it provides the best refresh rate for tracking. ULS mode. The up look search mode is designed to detect aircraft at higher altitudes than your own in look up clutter free situations. Clutter is not rejected in ULS. When the scan coverage illuminates the ground or certain cloud formations, many false targets are displayed. ULS is able to detect targets at longer ranges than RWS since its processing is designed for use in a clutter-free environment. However, according to the BMS manual, these differences are not currently implemented, so ULS is functionally identical to RWS. Velocity Search with Ranging VSR. The VSR mode will only show targets that have a velocity component along the radar's line of sight directly towards the F-16. Hence, this mode will only display contacts that are closing in. Contacts that are moving away extending are normally not displayed. The exception is if an extending contact is in the same azimuth and bar range of the one that is closing in. In such a case, the contact will be displayed. Note that SAM is unavailable with VSR. When you press TMS forward on a contact, it will put it in STT mode. This mode is most useful with a narrow bar and azimuth settings. It should be used when a threat is closing in and with these settings, it's capable of detecting smaller contacts at further array ranges than the RWS. TWS mode. When track while scan is selected, it will start to build up data on the contacts inside of its field of view, up to 10 contacts. You can select this mode by either using the OSB or, when in another mode, pressing TMS right long to select TWS. You can then cycle through the detected targets by pressing TMS right. This means that the target is bugged. To upgrade a contact to an STT, you can press TMS forward on it once. ACM mode. The air combat mode is designed to pick up and track targets at closer ranges. It will automatically put the first target it detects in STT. You can have it on a 30 by 20, 10 by 60, boresight and slewable, represented by 20, 60, bore and slew, respectively. Holding TMS forward commands bore and inhibits auto acquisition until TMS is released. Bore should be used along with the HUD 
by putting the cross over the target. Lock. ACM should be used when dogfighting, which I will cover in its own dedicated video. And there we have it. These are the modes and submodes available for the Viper in BMS. Understanding each mode and in which situation they should be used is important prior to learning about using weapons in conjunction with them. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.